This conference will now be recorded. Hello everyone. So today also we will extend isomerism. So still some topics are left that is ready. So last day we have seen what is cis trans isomerism. And just like cis trans isomerism, under geometrical isomerism, we have the next term, which is EZ isomerism. Sometimes what happens, cis trans convention is not enough in some cases. And in those cases, you have to take the help of EZ isomerism. Now, when it is sufficient, that we have to understand when we are to apply EZ isomerism. So when it is not sufficient, the condition is there is more than two different substitutes we know when there is CC double bonds, there are a total four groups. One, two, three, four. So out of these four groups, we have seen in case of cis trans that two groups are same. Suppose in one case it is AB, another case also it is AB. So it is only two types of groups or atoms. But when it is EZ isomerism, you will see it is more than two different substituents. So it must be at least more than two. Now it will be either ABCD, that is all the four substituents are different. Or it may be three are different and uh, that is ABC. So one will be repeated. So these are the cases when you will apply EZ isomers. It is used and it is based on priority rules. So in case of cis trans, we it is easy to understand which one will be cis and trans because when similar groups are on the same side, just like here you can see similar A groups are on the same side, so you will call it cis. But suppose now you have C. In one side, you have C also. Now what you will do? Now you have to understand among A and C, which will get more priority. And uh, other side also, among A and B, which will get more priority. So suppose I am seeing that among A and B, B is getting more priority. Encircling it with blue. So B is more having more priority than A. And in the right hand side, suppose C is having more priority than A. OK, so what will happen now? Higher priority groups are on the same side. So that is why you will call it Z. If same priority groups, that is higher priority groups are not on the same side, you will call it E. Now, here are some extra things we have to take care of. And what are those extra things that you have not done in case of cis trans? The extra things are now you have to decide based on some priority rules which group you will give more priority that you have to decide and for that you have to know the priority rules okay now in the primary sense you can consider that these priority rules that is based on atomic number that is if there is single atom it is easy to decide that is priority rules suppose there is bromine and chlorine obviously you will get priority to bromine because bromine is having higher atomic number than chlorine okay but sometimes there will be Larger groups will also see in those cases what to do based on priority rules. Here we will take uh, example. And you can already see what is Z isomer, what is E isomer. So in this example, in the left hand side, we have fluorine and chlorine. And obviously chlorine is having more priority than fluorine because it is having higher atomic number. And in the right hand side, iodine and bromine and iodine is having more priority. So you can see these two are already highlighted. So as higher priority groups are on the opposite side, so we will consider it as E. But if you see the next example, this side we have not disturbed, it is still the same. But now Br and I, they have exchanged their places and Cl and I, they are on the same side, priority groups on same side, and now it will be Z configuration, okay? So this is very simple to understand because only a single atom is there. You can easily understand the atomic number, which one is high. You can decide the priority. Now we will see another type of example. In this case, this is a CC double bond. Suppose this is carbon number one, this is carbon number two. In carbon number one, obviously it will get more priority than hydrogen. Because see, with carbon, directly carbon is attached. And carbon is having more atomic number compared to hydrogen. So that is why it will get more priority. In the right hand side, chlorine will get more priority. And as here, both the higher priority groups are on the same side. So we will consider it as. Next 
this example is interesting because in this molecule you have not just one cc double bond you have two cc double bonds so first we will focus on the first cc double bonds and when you will do the actual nomenclature along with ez then numbering will start from here three four actually it is symmetrical you can also do from the other side one two three four now first focus on one and two because this is the first cc double bond so in the first cc double bond higher priority groups among h and d though we know h and d they are isotope but you have to consider that isotope has higher priority which is having higher mass when you have same isotope higher mass you have to give priority so d will be getting more priority and in this case this total group you can consider as if it is a single group just like i am drawing it here i am writing it as g this is carbon number 1 this is carbon number 2 and g is having higher so both the higher priority groups they are on the same side so this cc double bond that will be z but what about the number 3 double bond is a double bond at 3 4 position or any other group now among g is having more priority and this side g is having more g side d that means now both the groups they are opposite that is higher priority groups they are opposite to each other and that is why for the second double bond here it will be e so second bond is e but for the first double bond it is z okay so when you will do the actual nomenclature you will start the nomenclature like this 2z 2z comma 3e within bracket and then you can do the rest of the nomenclature as we uh, do for all the molecules based on the rules fine so sometimes uh, you will find the nomenclature question also in the options it will be given different z and e combination so you also have to take care of this while when you will choose the correct nomenclature for any molecule now some priority rules we will try to see because based on this uh, we have to decide which group will get more priority which group will get less priority so here these rules are based on kahn ingold trilog sequence rules so three different names of scientist in short we call it cip rules and cip rules it is not just here we will also see it later uh, when we will deal with rs nomenclature but right now we are doing it for ez rank the atoms directly attached to olefinic carbon that means the carbon the part of the carbon which that is part of the double bond that carbon i am talking about so the atoms that are directly attached to the carbon which is part of the double bond you have to give priority according to their atomic number so first remember the example where we have given more priority that is chlorine and fluorine fluorine is getting less priority because chlorine is having higher atomic number higher priority given with a higher atomic number and if isotopes of same elements are present as you have seen already h and d suppose both are present which you will give more priority obviously it is d so higher priority is given to the isotope with higher atomic mass because atomic number is now same it is isotope they are isotope to each other so atomic number is same so that is why you have to consider atomic mass now if the atoms are still identical sometimes what happens the atom which is directly attached to cc double bond cc double bond and the carbon which is directly attached that carbon is also carbon uh, that position is also there is carbon so how what you will do so what you have to do if it is still identical examine the next atoms along the chain until you are finding a first point of difference until you are not finding that you have to continue the process okay so here when you will see same atoms are attached and in this carbon suppose there is hydrogen and for this suppose there is one hydrogen and there is two more methyl uh, two more methyl substituents so obviously you will give priority to this one because here with this carbon you have one h but two ch3 and here you have two three ch3 so that is why we are getting the first point of difference when you are we are moving to this carbon chain and that is why we are giving more priority to this group 
now we will uh, discuss one example where you will find the application of these rules and we will do it in the form of a question here we have a question given it is saying that draw the correct structural formula and nomenclature is given not just simple nomenclature it is also mentioning uh, mentioned with 2z that means here you will have a double one you can see also here two is mentioned so you will have a double one and when there is a double one there is a chance of a geometrical isomerism right so here we will first focus on the nomenclature because z any e, that we can decide later first of all we have to draw the structure and that we will do as we have seen in case of in nomenclature section how to do that here root word is paint that means longest chain that will be having total five carbon two three four five now if that is the case now at two position you have double so two position we have double bond if i am numbering it like this then the double bond will be here one position we have all that means at one position i will write oh now at three position there is a methyl group and at two position we have a tertiary butyl group that means c three more ch3 that is tertiary butyl group so now we have already drawn the molecule next if we focus on the cc double bond the first that is in the right hand side we have this group and we have a ch2oh now among ch2h and cme3 that is a tertiary butyl group how to give how to choose which one is having more priority here this carbon is attached to carbon this is also carbon now you have to remember you have two hydrogen atoms attached here that means if you focus on this carbon i'm giving a star mark because this is the star mark carbon which is directly attached to carbon number 2 so with this star mark carbon what are the atoms attached oxygen is attached h is attached h is attached so i will write it as o h h similarly if i am giving a star mark here because this is the carbon which is directly attached to carbon number 2 with this carbon three carbon attached so i will write it as c c c now when i am writing it here oxygen and c and oxygen is having more priority so that is why this group will this group should get more priority than c c c now come to the other side with this carbon you have three hydrogen attached so you will write it as c h h and here we have a ethyl group you have two hydrogen attached here so if i am giving this carbon star mark then this star mark carbon is attached to it one carbon 1h 1h sorry it will be not chh it will be hhh this is a mistake because this star mark carbon this is attached to three hydrogen and we are focusing on that so that is why it should be hhh not chh so be very careful what i am doing just focus on put a star mark on that position which is directly attached to this double bonded carbon after putting star mark you have to see the star mark atom attached to it how many atoms so in this case it is carbon and to satisfy valency three atoms will be there So in this case, it is attached to the carbon H H. In this case, it is attached to H H H. So this will be having more priority. So this is having higher priority. So now look at the molecule. Is it Z or E? Because we have seen that higher priority group is this one, and in this side, higher priority is this one, and this is the opposite. That means we have not drawn the correct structure. It is actually two E. rest of the part is okay no problem with nomenclature but it is not 2z it is 2e so this is not the correct answer the correct answer will be this molecule see here everything is same still we have ethyl group left hand side this is methyl group 
CHH, triple H. Now CH2H in the, on the other side, we have just exchanged the position of the tertiary butyl group and CH2H. Here it is OHH. This is triple uh, CCC. And here higher priority group is CH2H. And other side, this is the higher priority group. These two. Now you can call it 2Z. So both are having same structure. Bonding connectivity is same. Same number of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. But their spatial arrangement is not same. So that is why they are geometrical isomerism. And what type of geometrical? It is not cis trans. Because here we have more than two different groups. So you have to consider EZ nomenclature. Uh, sorry, EZ isomerism. Fine. So draw the correct structural formula of this. This will be the answer. This is our answer. Not the previous one. We will see one more example. Here also, the CC double bond, it is already encircled. With this CC double bond, you have C double bond, CH2. Now, if you are putting a star mark here, which is already bold, that means it is directly attached to CC double bond. With this carbon, you have one H. But now, you are seeing something new. In the previous case, we have not found any unsaturation in the groups. But now, you have some unsaturation. So what you will do when you have a double bond, basically this carbon, it is directly attached to carbon, but it is attached to this carbon by two bonds. So you have to consider this group as if I'm writing it again. So this is a star mark carbon. And if you remove this double bond as if it is H to 1H, 1C, another C. So I'm just breaking this double bond and writing it as if it is single bond. But as it is two times that is same carbon is attached to carbon two times so that is why i have written it in this book okay. now you can see why it is written as cch because this darmark carbon is attached to one c another c and h so that is why it is written as cch but if you do the same thing for the other substituent this darmark carbon is attached to two hydrogen and one carbon you can also write it elaborately H, H, then C, and then further hydrogen. But we will just stop here. So C, H, H, C, H, H. But among these, which one you will give more priority? Obviously, this one, because it is C, C, H, this is C, H, H. So that is why it is one, it is two. One means higher priority. It is red. Now come to this side. Here we have CH2H and when it is CH2H, this is the carbon which is directly attached to double bonded carbon and this carbon is attached to one oxygen, two hydrogen. So that is it is written as OHH. Similarly, here we have a C triple bond CH and this carbon is attached to one carbon by three bonds. So as if there are total three CC bonds and it is written as CCC. Now if you compare these two, oxygen is having more atomic number than carbon. We are getting that is at the first point of difference. We are finding different atoms and oxygen is having more atomic number. So that is why you have to give priority to OHH. So this is the high priority group. This is the high priority group. They are on the same side. So this will be Z. Okay. So this example, uh, it is helping us to understand that when there is some double bond or triple bond, how to uh, proceed. Fine. Similarly, one more example if I see, suppose you have a CC double bond and with this bond, there is attachment of COCH3. So what you will do in this case? Here, this is the carbon I'm putting a star mark because that is the carbon with which CC double bond, it is directly attached to CC double. Now the star mark carbon is attached to oxygen by double bonds. That means this carbon, if you write it like this, as if it is attached to two oxygen, one carbon. So it will be considered as OOC. Okay. So in this way, we can decide the priority. Now, very important point here given as a note. So the note is saying sometimes this trans and EZ are two different. We know it is two different naming system and their requirements that is when to apply it that also we know 
Systems is simpler because you can apply it when there are two different types of groups. But when it is more than two different, suppose A, B, C types, three different types. Now you have to take the help of EZ. But remember, they do not always match. Sometimes there will be some examples. At a first glance, it seems uh, that you can apply C strands, but you have to be careful. So here you can see this example. This is very interesting because here we have a methyl group. Here we have a ethyl group. In the other side, we have a ethyl group. Same product. We have chlorine. Now, at a first glance, it, it may seem that the two same groups are on the same side. So it will be, it should be considered as cis. But that should not be done because here you have total three different types of groups. What are the groups you have? You have methyl, you have methyl, you have chlorine. That means total three different types, A, B, C. It is not that you have only two types, A, B. You have three types, A, M, E, E, T, C, L. So don't think it will be cis. It will be actually E. Now, why it is E? Because first, if you focus on left-hand side groups among ethyl and methyl, ethyl should get more priority, number one. But on the other side, chlorine should get more priority, number one. Why? Because this is the atom which is directly attached to CC double bond. And this directly attached atom, chlorine is having higher atomic number than uh, carbon. So that is why we are giving more priority to chlorine. Okay, but if you see this side, this is the star mark carbon, and the star mark carbon is attached to 1C, 1H, 1H. But here, this carbon is attached to H, H, H. That is why it is having more priority compared to CH3. Don't consider the overall uh, mass. If you are thinking that it is high, a large group compared to ME, so that is why we are doing this. Don't think in that way. Sometimes, uh, this type of thinking you may reach correct result, but that is not the correct way of solving the problem. Okay, the correct way is you just have to focus on the atom which is with which CC bond is directly attached. After that, you have to proceed as long as you are not finding the first point of difference. So from this carbon, when we have moved further, we have found carbon HH, but here we have found 3H. So that is why it is having more priority and methyl and ultimately it will be E isomer, not the Z isomer. So here, don't think it is cis. That is, in some cases you can also find the name is given as cis, but actually it should be named as E. So here, uh, from the point of view of cis trans, though cis trans is not correct way to name it, but still I am saying at a first glance it may seem it is cis and actually it is E. So in this case, these two are not matching. So be careful. Now the third type under geometrical isomerism is seen anti-isomers. We have seen uh, first cis trans under geometrical isomerism. Second, we have seen EZ. Now we have reached the third point, which is seen anti. Now the next question is when you will apply seen anti? We already know when to apply cis trans. It is for CC double bonds where two types of different groups are there. We also know when to apply EZ. When you will apply it? When there is more than two different types, A, B, C or A, B, C, D. But when to apply C, N, T? C, N, T special cases, on, you will apply it only in case of auxins. Suppose you are doing some nomenclature with auxin and there are two possibility, that is two different types of geometrical isomerism possible for auxin. Then you have to uh, write it as CIN or anti. But what is oxine? Oxine basically may be two types, aldoxine or ketoxine. Oxine is basically generated from aldehyde or keto. So this is the general structure of aldoxine. So aldoxine, if you look at the C double bond N, this is basically generated from aldehyde. So what we do, if you treat this molecule with NH2OH, then this H2 and oxygen, it will be removed as water. And in that place, C double bond L will be produced. But why we are talking about C and T here? Because here we do not have any CC double bond. Rather, we have 
C N double bond, isn't it? And in N, remember there is a double bond. I'm sorry, there is a lone pair. So though it is not, uh, you cannot say it is a group, but that is also a kind of group. And here we do not have C C double bond, but we have C N double bond. So just like aldoxime, it is uh, generated from aldehyde. So that is why the name is like this, aldoxime. And ketoxim means both side now you can see some R groups as if it is generated from some ketone when you are treating it with NH2H. Right? Now for ketoxim aldoxim, how to do the synanti, uh, how to find this type of isomerism? Here we have taken actual example of oxim and this is benzyl doxim where you have pH group and uh, H. So this is C and double bond. One side we have uh, pH, another side we have H. Now, don't try to apply the priority rules that we have already learned. Here, the rule is uh, to some extent different. So here to identify isomers of aldoxin. So th this is this rule is for aldoxin. We should see special re relationship of OH and H. So whenever you are talking about aldoxin, you will always find H and OH. If these two groups are on the same side, it will be seen. If the, these two groups are on the opposite side, it will be anti. So don't just follow the conventional priority rules that we have seen. And one thing you can remember that uh, lone pairs, if you consider, uh, though it, there is no atomic number possible, but lone pair is having very low priority, even lesser than hydrogen, okay? Now don't think that this is low priority and in this side H is low priority and they are opposite to each other. So it should be anti. It is not like that. The rule is, uh, that is, it is specifically for aldoxin. The rule is like this. It, it is based on OH and H, their relative position. C and anti. Next we'll see what to do for ketoxin. Here, we should see special arrangement of OH group. And here we do not have H, unlike the previous case. Now we have some other groups. Here it is mentioned the relationship of OH group and first group. But what is first group? First group means, just look at this example. Here you have ethyl group and methyl group. It is ketoxin. Both sides you should have some R group. And when you will write the nomenclature, you will write ethyl first, then methyl. Why? Because E comes before M alphabetically, isn't it? So that is why this is the first group in the name. And this first group and OH, if they are on the same side, then it will be seen. Similarly, first group and OH, opposite side, they will be anti. So to see, what is first group? First group is the term which is used, the first position of the name. And ethyl is coming before methyl because of its alphabetical order. So this rule you have to follow when it is ketoxin. So for aldoxin and ketoxin, these are the specific rules. Here we have a problem based on this geometrical isomerism and it is asking number of geometrical isomers possible for this compound. So in this compound, you have basically total two CC double bonds, isn't it? And here we have methyl group then the two CC double bonds consecutively and it is ending with ethyl group, right? Now, if you focus on a particular CC double bond, you can have E, you can have Z. Similarly, for the other group, uh, other CC bond also, you can have E or you can have Z. Now, as there are two CC double bonds, you can apply this rule that is 2 to the power n, that is for this type of simple structure. I'm not saying it is true for always. And uh, beta, even if you do not apply it, it is okay because this is a very simple structure. Easily you can understand how many will be there. So just fix any of these. If you focus on the first CC double bonds, fix it as E. Now when the first double bond is E, suppose this is first double bond, this is second double bond. When first double bond is E, you can have two possibility under uh, for the second double bond. You can have Z, you can have E. Now when the first double bond is fixed at Z, 
then for the second double bond you can have two combinations z or e that means how many possibilities are there total four possibilities isn't it now we will actually see the structures so in this structure you can see this is number suppose if i am putting number here one two three four five six so this is two three four five so this is basically the first cc double bond it is e that is it is written as 2e4e why it is e because compared to hydrogen this is having more priority for three carbon also compared to h this total group will be having more priority so that is why it is 2e now come to the second double bond in the second double bond h and you have this total group so total this larger group it is having more priority and for the five carbon here also we have h and this large group so this two high priority groups on the opposite side so both the double bonds are e and the nomenclature is 2e4e hepta di though in the question it is not asking about the nomenclature but just for information uh, look at the name it is 2e4e hepta di in longest chain total seven carbon now the changes we have made in the second structure the second double bond is still e so see second double bond there is no difference in uh, that is we have not changed the picture only difference is here this methyl is now on the other side and here higher priority groups are on the same side so that is it is z in the third picture we have not disturbed the first cc double bond compared to suppose this is a this is b c and d if you compare a and c we have not disturbed 2e arrangement we have only changed the 4z here both the high priority groups are on the same side so that is why it is 4z 2 3 4 5 the two position double bond it is uh, z configuration four position double bond z configuration so it is 4z and this is same as before now if you compare the last one we have started from a so that is why i am saying to compare with the first structure if you compare d and a you will see in both two position and four position we have changed the grouping their positions so now in both cases it will be z but even if you do not draw all the structure it is a common sense that uh, when the first one is z you are fixing it as z you can have two possibility and when the you are fixing it at e then also you have two possibility fine so correct option will be four total four possible how many geometrical isomers are possible for this now this is also interesting because here we have not just cc double bond we also have cn double bond see if i am drawing this like 1 2 3 4 one, 2 3 4 so at four position now there will be cn double bond and there is oh but this oh and hydrogen depending on whether they are on the same side or not so here i have drawn it from same side so when they are on same side it is fixed as seen but when it is seen the position of cc double bond the groupings they can change their position so the, this picture it is clear that for cc double bond it is uh, higher priority groups they are on the opposite side so it should be e so it is e seen but z seen is also possible e seen z seen similarly when this uh, aldoxin it will be anti another two possibilities will be there e anti z anti so it is you can find some similarity with the previous question in the previous question we have two cc double bonds right but for this question we have cc double bond and cn double bond. here you have possibility of z here you have z Here also you have possibility z, but in this case it will be 
C90. But rules are same. That is when you are fixing it in, you can have two possibilities when you are fixing it at anti. You have two possibilities. So again, it will be total four geometrical isomers possible. Choose the correct option from the following. A group gets priority if its atomic number is high. Now, we have seen that uh, priority when it is single atom, suppose chlorine or bromine, then based on atomic number, you can easily choose which one is higher priority. And even if you have some group, suppose uh, this is CC double bond, here we have some ethyl group, here we have some ethyl group, then also it is actually based on atomic number. So direct atom, if attached to CC double one, if you have to move further until you are finding first point of difference. Here also it is the same thing, but one point is common that it is whatever we are doing, first point of difference, or directly you can understand which one is higher, having higher atomic number. In both cases, atomic number is the ultimate that we are checking, right? We are giving more priority to uh, based on the atomic number. So if it is atoms attached like these bromine and F directly, you can understand this is having higher atomic number. But even if directly attached atoms are same, as you can see, directly attached atoms are carbon. But next you are moving further, right? And you are seeing that you are getting three hydrogen. In this case, you are getting one carbon to hydrogen. And you are giving more priority to this group because C is at but that is also based on atomic number, right? So this will be correct. That means rest of the three options are wrong. But why they are wrong? That also we will discuss. When atoms are to the ones have same atomic number, the first atoms are considered. Now, how it can be cut? It is saying that the atoms attached to double bond, same atomic number. So see, here carbon is attached to CC double bond. Here also carbon is at CC double bond. But how you can choose the first atoms uh, as the, the first atoms are considered, how it can be true. When same atomic number atoms are attached, you move further, isn't it? So that is why when you have moved further, you are getting H, H, H. But in this case, you are getting C, H, H. Okay, so we are not considering the first atoms. We are proceeding to next or still it is same, you are proceeding next, right? So that is why this is not correct. A group gets priority if it's atomic number low, obviously not correct. Lone pair gets more priority as it is ranked above hydrogen. Now, this is also not correct. We know that uh, for lone pair, you cannot have any atomic number, but remember, uh, at, at, based on atomic number, suppose bromine is having more priority than AF, AF is having more H, but lone pair is the least priority, even, even if it is least than H. That is lower than H. So lone pair gets more priority ranked above hydrogen. This is not correct. So only the first option is correct. So this question is based on uh, priority rules. Choose the correct option for the given structure, which isomerism uh, it follows. Here we have options EZ and C strands. Now, left hand side two groups if you see it is very easy to understand why because this is the atom directly attached to cc double bond this is the atom directly attached to cc double bond and both are having different atomic number you can easily understand c will get more priority than h having atomic higher atomic number than h so this side we have decided which one is having more priority this is having more priority but what about the other one here Attached atoms are same. Now you have to move further. Now with the attached atoms, what are the atoms attached? H, 1H, 2C. Because it is CC double one. This is a star mark carbon. In this case, with the star mark carbon, you have 1H, you have 1C, you have 1C. Still there is a tie, isn't it? So what you will do? Further you will move. Now. If I'm putting a star mark to this carbon, because we are moving next. Now with this star mark hydrogen, uh, sorry, star mark carbon, here two H are attached. But here with the star mark carbon, you have uh, CH, then this carbon, 
basically it is you can have any of this uh, methyl group you can choose here you have three hydrogens you can also put star mark to this carbon because they are actually same here also they are both are same it doesn't matter which one you are choosing so when you are moving further you are uh, getting 3h right but when you are moving further for this carbon you are getting 2h this 2h is this two but this carbon is also attached to one more carbon because you have to break the c double bond o the star mark carbon is basically attached to two hydrogen two carbon right so you are getting here chh but you are getting here hhh so that is why more priority will be for c double bond ch ch double bond ch2 not chme2 so it should be z iso so you have seen how we have proceeded uh, until we are not finding the first point of difference okay so this carbon is considered still we are there is a tie then we have moved to next carbon and we are getting some first point of difference and that is why we can choose this will be correct option now geometrical isomerism we have covered and after geometrical isomerism after that we have optical isomerism okay so here also there will be some special arrangement difference but uh, you will not find any uh, that is unlike geometrical isomerism where you have seen some cc double bond or you have seen some cn double bond but now it is not like that it is different so this is also configurational isomer just like geometrical isomerism but under configurational we have uh, one we have finished geometrical now we are proceeding to another configurational isomer where it is optical so the configurational isomers that are non geometrical isomers you can consider the rest of the configurational isomers as optical isomers so suppose you are finding some isomers which are configurational because you know uh, by simply simple cc bond rotation we will not make some new isomer by cc bond rotation what you get that we call conformational isomer but when it's configurational isomer there is no such rotation and under configurational when you are not getting any geometrical isomerism relationship the only thing left is optical isomers now how to uh, that how they differ from each other they differ in the placement of substituent groups around one or more atoms of the molecule placement of substituent groups around one or more atoms mostly this around one atoms that is written here mostly it is carbon atom okay they were given their name that is why we are we call them like this optical it is because of their interaction with plane polarized light next question is what is plane polarized light we know light but what is this specific kind of light so this is a special kind of light which consists of waves we know light consists of waves but sometimes it observe that the direction of vibration of these waves is same for all the waves present in this light so if this condition is fulfilled the direction of vibration is same for all the waves then you can call that special kind of light as plane polarized light so this is the definition of plane polarized light you can look at this picture this part you can see some unpolarized light because for simplicity only two different wave uh, waves are shown here so this blue wave it has one type of plane which is uh, as if perpendicular to the screen and the orange wave that is not in the same plane like the blue one though it is for simplicity actually it is not that only two waves are present it may more than that but for simplicity only two waves are showing and you can understand these two waves they are not in the same plane now we are putting some polarizing filter so this filter will help to have plane polarized light where you will see the wavelengths sorry the waves will be in the same plane so that is why now that we do not have the blue one we have an, only one type of wave here in the same plane so that is why we are calling it polarized light 
So we can make polarized light starting from one polarized by putting a polarizing field. Okay. So this side it is unpolarized. Now it is plane polarized. Optical isomers, we can divide it as enantiomer or diastereomer. But first we will cover enantiomers and it will take some time because regarding enantiomers, there is so many things that we have to understand under this heading of enantiomer. Once we finish an enantiomer, we properly understand one enantiomer, then we will proceed to another type of optical isomer, which is diastereomer. But before going to diastereomer, we should have clarity about what is enantiomers. Okay. Okay, we'll go to enantiomers, but uh, here you can see a term optically active compounds. In the previous slide, you have seen optical isomerism, but to understand optical isomerism properly, we have to know how to understand which compounds are optically active because all these terms are they are important for each other. If you know optical isomer, you also have to know what is uh, optically active compounds. So what is optically active compounds? It is observed that some organic molecules, they have the ability to rotate the plane polarized, the plane of plane polarized light. So there are some organic compounds. It is only for some organic compounds. One example is also given. It is observed that they have the capability when this plane polarized light is passing through them, they can rotate this plane of the wave. So in the previous slide, you have seen, this is the plane of the wave, right? But suppose suddenly this plane is moved to some degree. And how it is occurring? It is because of some compound. Suppose the wave is moving through that compound and the compound has that capability to rotate the plane of the wave. So only when you are finding that those compounds are basically optically active compounds. And this phenomena, this property is called optical activity. So you can say optical active compounds can show optical activity. Optically inactive compounds cannot show optical activity. So here we have this simple picture. Suppose this is unpolarized light where different planes are there for the waves. The, the, these directions are different planes. But when we are putting some filter, we have single plane, plane polarized light. So this is plane polarized light. Now in this tube, suppose there is some optically active compounds present. So see how the plane is gradually changing to some degree. So it is completely rotated, here it is straight, but now it is moved to some degree. So that is why you can say in this tube, there must be some optically active compounds. That is why this type of phenomenon is occurred. But if it is optically inactive, even if you are making by putting polarization filter, you are getting some plane polarized light. But if there is optically inactive compound present in the tube through which the light is passing, through which the plane polarized light is passing, and there is no uh, plane change, it is still same. So it is optically inactive. Okay. Now, when we consider uh, enantiomer, diastereomer, basically all in all cases, it is optically active compounds. Now, once you understand this type of rotation is possible, rotation can be two types. It may be right direction rotation or clockwise rotation. If the organic compound is uh, rotating in right direction, you will call them dextrorotatory. Dextra means right. It is represented by small d or plus sign. Now don't be confused with capital D. Sometimes capital D is also mentioned before the names of some com organic compounds, but that use of capital D or L that is completely for different purpose. Don't be confused with this. When you are doing, uh, you are dealing with optically active compounds, you are talking about the direction change of this wave, you have to consider small d. And this plus sign, it has nothing to do with capital D or L. Fine. So dextra means right. That is why we call them dextrorotatory. If it is left or anticlockwise, it is called levorotatory because this term means left. 
and here it is denoted by small l or you can use negative sign and optically active, active compounds it may exist in two or more isomeric forms okay so here suppose we have optically active compounds a the active compound is suppose a and it is rotating it to some degree suppose it is rotating it by plus 50 degree why i am saying plus suppose it is clockwise rotation it is plus 50 degree now a when you will consider its mirror image suppose a mirror image is a prime a prime will also move the same degree that is the movement of this plane polarized light that will also be by 50 degree but now it is minus 50 degree 15 degree not 50 fine so when you have the mirror image of this molecule you will have same rotation but sign is different if it is right in the first place it will be left in the second place so please plus or minus or it can be d or l d is plus l is minus now this mirror image what it actually means that we are going to see next fine now here i am just saying that it, it is having one more isomer but not necessarily it will have one answer it may exist two or more so more we will proceed to this topic gradually we will understand what this line actually means right now you will not be able to understand fully just try to understand what is optically active compounds and uh, based on two different types of direction of rotation we can have d or l or plus minus and optically active compound it may exist two or more isomeric forms Now we have to know enantiomers. So the optical isomers which rotate the plane of polarized light with equal angle but opposite direction. See this we have just say as uh, we have just seen in the previous slide. Suppose one compound being it as plus 15 degree, another uh, compound which is it minus 50 degree. So when we are having this type of situation, equal angle but opposite direction, you can call them enantiomer. And the phenomena is enantiomerism. So you can say that here A and A prime, they are showing enantiomerism relationship between them. Images are possible to mirror no type of mirror suppose you have any object and that object is having some mirror image in some cases these two mirror images are to each other just consider this example forget about organic molecules for some time and look at this picture suppose you have a flux glass or plastic whatever it is symmetrical it looks symmetrical you have taken its mirror image there is a mirror be between them so these are mirror image to each other. Now if Just take your two hands and if you are placing its mirror image that is right hand is basically you even if you don't have to take any mirror if you, if you simply consider your left hand and right hand, they are already mirror image to each other isn't it if you are trying to superimpose to each other you will see they will not it, they will be like this don't fold one don't cover one hand with another hand then you are changing the plane of the hand and in that case you can say that they are superimposed but that is not the thing you should do you have to keep your two ha hands in the same plane so when you are keeping it in the same plane keeping the plane same 
don't change the plane of your hand if you are trying to place one upon each other you will see they will not be superimposed so this is the thing that we are talking about in case of enantiomers whenever you will try to do these things for enantiomers having mirror image these two mirror images are non superimposable so this is the thing that you will observe in case of enantiomers they are non having non superimposable mirror image to each other a carbon atom whose strength of valency is satisfied by four different substituents is called asymmetric carbon or chiral carbon center uh, that is it is called chiral carbon or chiral center or asymmetric center and that is indicated by c star we know carbon atom is tetravalent and there should be four different groups yes it is true that if there is double bond there is no four different groups but suppose if it is unsaturated there will be four different groups and in those cases if all these four groups are different it will be considered as chiral center or chiral carbon here if you look at this molecule if i am putting a number 1 here so for number 1 carbon you have two same substituents it is true the second substituent and third substituent it is completely different but two hydrogens two same substituents are there so carbon 1 is not chiral center but carbon number 2 is chiral center because here you can see all the four groups are different number 1 group second group third group fourth group all the groups are different so that is why this carbon is considered as chiral center some more examples here we have two same groups so this is not chiral center but the second carbon is it chiral center it is also not chiral center because you have two hydrogen so whether it is c1 or c2 both are not chiral carbon come to the second molecule three same substituents not chiral carbon same substituents not chiral carbon come to the third molecule same substituents what what about carbon number 2 methyl substituent chlorine h d this is chiral carbon isn't it what about the last molecule same substituents not chiral carbon but the second carbon we have ch2 br group h methyl oh so this can be considered as chiral carbon so four groups must be different otherwise you cannot call them chiral carbon okay now for enantiomers we have to know some more information but that we will cover in the next class we will not be able to finish it so we are ending the session here thank you for listening